Hi everyone, it's Bev DeBono, and I've got a tip for you today that works with circles and laser borders or stickers, or you can use border maker cartridges up at the top. Now, these big circles down here are from either extra mats that come in your mat packs, because a lot of times the things that come in your mats um, we don't end up using or we think are a little too big for our pages. But if you trim them down, they really are kind of, of cute. So it's just another idea of a way to use your mats, the titles on your mats, and also to um, utilize your papers and to make your borders pop. So what you're going to need is a background paper. And then you're going to need some contrast to do like your top and a bottom border section, and then some coordinating papers to do something else in the middle. So this was using sun rays for days, which is a fun summer pack that came with lasers. Tonight I'm going to be using the um, relax and unwind bundle and this is just a fun home, home one. So some nice soft, uh, soft colors. Okay, so this pack came with, um, instead of mats, it came with a page like this that had a lot of um, titles and, and things like this. And so I wanted to show you that this is where I got the home sweet home from. And it's a really great idea to use it in a different way, as opposed to just as a rectangle all the time. So that is where I'm gonna be getting my title from. But as I said, you can get titles from the mats, you can get titles, you can do your own Cricut titles, you can do whatever titles um, you like. These are just a couple examples of ones that I would just cut down um, with a circle and um, use for titles on a page. So I'm going to need a background and I, this is kind of a fun pack, and I'm going to use this nice neutral as my background. And then I want to select some papers that I'm going to use as a top border and a bottom border. And this is a great way to use some really busy patterns as well. Like when you look at this paper, it's pretty busy, but cut in a inch and a half strip on the top and the bottom, it actually adds your base for the page and it helps you coordinate all of the other circles. So I'm gonna use this for my strips. And then I'm thinking of what am I gonna use for circles? So I'm gonna pick out colors that are in this this big busy paper. Okay, so that will blend with it. The brown will blend with it. The blue will blend with it. So I am just picking out papers um, that will blend with this top border here. Okay, so now what we want to do is do our base. So we're going to set up our base. We're going to do our strip on the bottom and our strip at the top. And those strips are an inch and a half wide. So they are an inch and a half wide. Okay, so I'm going to put this in my, my trimmer. And I'm going to cut this at the inch and a half mark twice. Now the reason I'm using the right hand side of my trimmer is because when I put it at the inch and a half mark on the right hand side, I have a lot of paper to hold on to with my left hand to give it stability. If I did it this way at the inch and a half mark, by the time I close my arm on my trimmer, and then there's not a lot for me to hold on to on the right hand side without going off the edge of the trimmer. So always try to use, um, the side that gives you the most amount of paper to hold on to. So I'm going to cut an inch and a half two times. 
and we're going to use one for the top and one for the bottom. And let's go ahead and add those to our pages, to our base. And it's gonna go flush to the top and flush to the bottom of your page. So this one goes way up to the tippy top. And this one goes down to the bottom. See, so already you've set up your base to look a little different than just a plain beige paper. And now we need five circles. Four of them are going to be circle number three. And circle number three is your largest circle of the group here. At circle number three, if you haven't labeled your circles, it's a, it's a great idea. So your smallest circle is circle number one. Your second is the middle one is circle number two. And the next one is circle number three. So we're going to be using circle number three. And we're going to make four circles of coordinating colors like we have here four circles of that size. And we're using the red blade on the inside. So circle number three, red blade on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and these are some scrap papers that I'm, that I'm using, or maybe it's this one, maybe it's this one. red blade on the inside and you want four different colors and if you have a title or if you have a mat from a mat pack that you want to use that would be fun and sometimes if you um, end up with your circle and you have a little whisker hanging out which is just this little piece you just clip it with your with your scissor. Okay, so that's my first. Then I want another one. You want coordinating colors. And I'm picking up the coordinating colors that are in the busy pattern, that busy paper. Same template, circle number three red blade on the inside. And now my third circle, same, um, same template, red blade on the inside. Okay. And now I'm going to use that piece here for a title, Home Sweet Home. And that's also gonna be red blade on the inside. I'm wondering if I could get this one, but it's just a little too, a little too um, small for my template, let's see. So some of these, I'm just trying to see if I could fit. Oh, here, maybe I could fit this one. And that's just not going to make it. Okay, so I'm going to use Home Sweet Home and I'm just going to center my template to where it's just right in the middle of the circle. Same template, same blade, red blade on the inside. Okay, so now I have four of that size circle. And I just want to play with it a little bit and kind of arrange them a little. 
So because I'm doing um, a double page spread, I kind of want the colors to, um, you know, go a little bit, or I want the page to mirror. So I'm just going to set it up. And when you're laying your circles, you want one circle up, one circle down, one circle up, one circle down. Okay, as opposed to putting all your circles like this, um, this one has a lot more interest because it's got some variety of height. Okay, so lay your four circles out first. So I'd start with one at the end, which is down, and then the other one that's up, another one that's down, and then the other one that's up. And then just for another quick contrast, I added a smaller circle here, just a smaller circle. And that is going to be from circle number two, which is the middle circle, the medium circle. And again, red blade on the inside. So now the smaller circle, red blade on the inside. And then you can just play with it and see where you want it to go. So vary your circles, one up, one down, one up, one down, and then sneak in, Sneak in one of your smaller ones, like this one, I think I'm gonna sneak in over here this time. And then that makes it, that makes it a lot of fun. Okay, so then make sure your circles are all still touching. All right, and you're ready to tape this down. Okay, so tape one at a time. This is such a quick and easy um, border. And the other thing is that um, if you look at some of the mats and the mat packs, sometimes the mats and the mat packs are different colors or different designs than what come with your paper. So that would be a great way to feature it on a page like this. Use my repo tape in case. I want to move it, you know, nestle another one around. And then I'm going to put the big one first. And then... Okay, and then and then kind of nestle your other one in there. And there you go. That's your bottom border. And then to finish your border, what you want to do is you want to either use your dot pen or a dual tip pen. So I'm gonna use a navy dual tip pen and I'm going to just make dots. I'm gonna lightly put dots all around the edges here of the circles that are on the bottom bottom. I'm just going to follow the pattern of the circle and then just put some dots on that. I'll show you this one in the lighter color might actually show up a little bit better. And again, it just um, finishes it off and adds another uh, dimension. So you want to use the, the thicker side, the bolder side. Now, if if you use a dot pen, just be careful because when you put pressure on the dot pen, it will make your dots bigger and you don't want such a large dot. Um, so you just want a dot just going around and we're just going to do it on the top layer and that finishes this off and really makes it a lot of fun. just doing the top layer. 
just dot, 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 dot. And just follow it. all the way around. Dots add another dimension and just add some movement to your page. So um, they really are a fun, a fun accent. Okay, so once you have your bottom section done, then you want to go ahead and look at your top. So you can decide what you're going to put at your top for your border. Now, this particular pack had quite a few uh, designs in it. Um, and so I'm going to, this was cute. It's a lot of home stuff. So this is cute with the books with the cat on the shelf. I think that's adorable. Um, but you can pick any um, anything that you, that you want to put up at the top. You can also punch your own border if you're doing um, one that you have a border punch for. And once you select or decide what you're going to use across the top, then that's going to determine the width of the paper that's going to go behind it. So what I mean by this is this particular one, um, had a little bit of a wider border. This was about an inch and a half behind the laser itself. And then we put quarter inch strips at top and bottom. And that's just another way of not using up all your paper and putting two layers of borders, but you can get by with a quarter inch strip at the top and the bottom once you place this middle section. So this is kind of, kind of a thinner border for me. So I think, and I'm just gonna measure it here on my mat. I think I'm just gonna need an inch and a quarter border on this one. So you want to get a neutral paper that go to go behind whatever border you are using. So I'm gonna get a neutral pattern for this. And I'm gonna cut that. You're going to cut it to either um, a little bit wider than the border that you're actually using. So like this is, an, if this is an inch, then I'm going to make the border uh, that goes behind it inch and a quarter. If your border is an inch and a half, then you want an inch and three quarters um, so that you, that you have enough to show at the top and at the bottom, okay? By just putting it on here, it doesn't really pop. That's why I've added another layer and put another piece behind it. So for this one, I'm going to use um, an inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna put an inch and a quarter behind this border here. And as I said, yours could vary depending on the size of what you're using up at the top. Okay, and that's gonna work out for me, right like that. And then it just adds another layer here under the laser that I'm using. Okay, now I'm ready to tape that down onto that little strip that I just cut. <clears throat> and I'm going to place that. Usually you can center it. But if you want to add foam on your border, you can, and that would work as well. Okay, and now you're ready to add this border strip onto your, the top of your base. So I'm going to, Quick add this and this also, this was at an inch and a quarter. 
Now, by having my mats side by side, I can always move my paper over and see exactly where that border went. But I also know that it's an inch and a quarter down from the top. So I will look at an inch and a quarter down from the top on the left, and then an inch and a quarter down from the top on the right. And to add one more layer to this, what we want to do is to get a contrast color. So I'm going to go for this navy, and I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch, two strips at a quarter of an inch, and put one under this strip and one above that strip. Okay, okay so the quarter of an inch on your trimmer is right at the end of the gray cutting mat. Okay. The first line is a half an inch. The gray is a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that at the, that line right there. There's my quarter of an inch strip. That's gonna go on the bottom. And then I have another quarter of an inch strip. And that's gonna go right up at the top. And that is going to frame that other strip. The reason I do these quarter inch strips is to save paper. I cut an inch and a quarter for that back piece. And if actually I could have cut another piece of paper an inch and three quarters, but then I have all that paper that I'm sort of wasting under there. So I try to maximize my paper as much as possible. And since only a quarter of an inch is showing um, at the top and the bottom, then I'm just gonna cut that quarter of an inch. Okay, so that's just a way to always max out on your paper. And sometimes you just have quarter of inches, a quarter of an inch uh, piece um, laying around or left over. And it's a great way to you know, showcase it and use it. And there you go. This is our technique for today. And it's just a fast, fast page. And this is the home sweet home. And then I also did it with sun rays for days. So thanks for joining me. I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel, Bev DeBono Designs. You can subscribe to me on YouTube. That way you'll know whenever I post a video. And I hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.